They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jalen Carter, Spike, they shit on you. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me? Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, Spike, they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? Eight styles. Well, good morning, good people. Marco here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo as well. As Joe Bear is back at the main man cave. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is hump day, and I hope you are getting over the hump. We are one week away from the beginning of the league year where the Dallas Cowboys need to get back under the cap. I have my bottle right here of rum for when the Cowboys actually make some kind of move. Um, I also have a bottle of rum that we got in, I believe, uh, 2018 in Puerto Rico. We bottled a bottle of 25-year-old rum, and we said, I will not open it till the Cowboys go to the Super Bowl. So I guess now it is 30 years old rum. It's definitely aged. And, you know, some of the uh, trolls out there said, does rum go bad? Because if it does, it probably will before the Cowboys win the Super Bowl. So here's where it's interesting. And I... I, I I don't sleep, you know, a lot of people go to bed, boom, and they just don't wake up till the alarm clock goes up. I am awake a lot in the middle of the night, you know, and anybody who's my age, you understand that because, you know, you got to go to the bathroom a couple of times, but moreover than that, I wake up in the middle of the night because if I have something on my mind, solutions come to me or thoughts about it will come to me. And last night I was sitting there thinking about the whole situation with Micah Parsons, where they exercised the fifth-year option, which, of course, you were going to because that just gives you more time if you need to to make a deal. I don't think that they really want him to play on his fifth-year option because the problem if you're doing that is if you get a deal done now, it's in today's dollars, even though next year and the year after will be in later dollars. If you wait until you, know, you don't do anything this year and then he plays on his fifth-year option next year, and the price will be more expensive if you decide that, you know, we're going to franchise tag him after that, which you could do. You you don't actually ever have to, except after three franchise tags, have to get a deal done with Micah Parsons. But the thing is, is the longer you wait, the more it goes. And the thing here that seems petty. Now, Ari Murov, I, I probably mispronounced his name, forgive me, um, there's we all have things that we're good at i'm in really good at being able to build like bookcases and cabinets and rebuild a house i bet some of you guys who are going to talk about how i mispronounce names and things like that will tell me you're an idiot but i bet you can't do this we all have our own talents mine sounding out names and things like that is not mine so forgive me but here's what his clarity on Micah Parsons. The Cowboys aren't the one who decides what position Micah Parsons is classified as. That will be decided by the NFL Management Council. The fifth year option for a linebacker is $24.4 million. Um, the fifth year option for a defensive end is $21. Um, I'm kind of surprised on that because I would have thought an edge rusher would actually be more money than a linebacker. But what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll. Fortunately, at least I'm not in my mama's basement. So my thing here is this. I get what he's saying that it is up to the NFL's management council. But the whole time that you've had him here, the three years, you have said he's a linebacker. Your coach has said he's a linebacker. And Micah Parsons has done everything that you want him to do except for win a Super Bowl. He's done things on the field that nobody's done. It's like him and Reggie White. That's the list. So to try and say, we're going to save, you know, $2.7 million next year 
on Micah Parsons when hopefully you're actually going to get a new deal seems kind of petty. Because ultimately, if you don't do the deal now, and I get it if you don't do the deal this year because it's only $5 million this year, you will definitely want to do it next year so you can get cap relief. You don't want to have a $21 million hit next year. You get a long-term deal done, you maybe cut that in half the first year. It gives you cap relief. So this fifth-year option of 24 versus 21 really should be meaningless. But this is the problem. This it, it, this is what it opened my eyes up in the middle of the night last night. The problem for the Cowboys is, is we always say the player, you know, he should be a team guy and look out for the team, leave some money on the table for others so that way they can go out and get some players and things, right? That's, that's what we say about the players, that they're not a team guy. But are the Cowboys a team guy? Ownership? And by that I mean is, when have the team done something for the player? Because what always happens, I don't know why it's so painful, every time we have a contract, every single time, we get told what the team is not going to do, right, from you know, you think back to Des Bryant. Oh, Des Bryant, you know, he's a bad guy. You know, we heard all these different stories and rumors that there was a tape out there that was 10 times worse than Ray Rice. You know, and they were going back through Des Bryant's, you know, having his pants saggy at the mall and this. They trashed him before they finally paid him. You literally go through and rake people through the coals. And then you say, oh, well, we're going to pay him then. And you go through with these contracts and you wait till the last minute. You know, Jerry Jones says deadlines make deals get done, but it seems like they get done poorly. Correct me if I'm wrong, but look at every contract. With Demarcus Lawrence before his first contract, we heard that, you know, well, we had talked to the agent before um, at the Combine. And, you know, we thought we were getting a deal for about $18 million. And now he wants $21 million and we're not going to go that high. And they ended up going that high. You trashed him, made him sound greedy to the fans and things, and then ended up paying him what he wanted originally. You go through with Zeke Elliott. And mind you, mind you, on top of it, to make it worse, to make it worse with D-Law, you messed around to the point where he had to put a gun to your head, so to speak, and basically say, I'm not getting my shoulder worked on until I get my contract, which literally meant that he could not work out all off season. And when the season started, his shoulder was weak. That season was lost only because the Cowboys screwed up with the contract. You can look at this with Zeke Elliott. When you came out and said, we're not going to reset the market. We're not going to reset the market on the fourth year of your running back. And damn if you didn't reset the market after you literally trashed him and said, Zeke who? Zeke who? We don't need Zeke. And then you end up wasting him for that season because he's not in training camp. He's not in shape. Another lost season for no other reason of the Cowboys don't know how to negotiate. The Dak Prescott situation. You literally went through four years of having a guy who cost you $4 million. You should have looked at that and said, my God, we've been paying him less than the backup quarterback. Let's get this thing done to make him whole because he's done everything we've wanted him to. And instead, you wait till the last damn minute and try and get a deal done and don't get it done in time. And then you play on a franchise tag, which costs you more cap money that season. So finally, here's my point in all this. When D-Law had a $29 million cap hit, Catboy goes to him and says, you know, we know you've got a couple years left on your deal. We know we owe you $29 million. How about we just give you $10 million guaranteed for one year, and we're good? And what did he say? Man, release me. Release me. So you go through, 
you trash the individual. You basically tell them they're not worth the money they're asking for, that they're just being greedy and not a team player. And of course, you know, we don't really need you. We don't really need you. Isn't that kind of what Jerry, I'm not, I'm not, I have no fear of losing Dak. It gets done, how it gets done and all that. You know, Catboy, hey, he's got to leave money on the table for others. Okay. Micah Parsons, he's towed the company line, done everything in the world possible. And now you kind of get petty and say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to take that little, I'm going to take that little bit. Now, maybe, maybe it is true that it is determined by the management council, but this would be one of those ones that you'd say, let's go ahead and do the right thing. And we'll go ahead and say he is a line. I mean, that he's a linebacker because that's what we have designated him as. So he gets a little bit extra money on there and feels good. Instead of doing that, you look at this and say, they're trying to screw me. What? And if you're sitting here and you are screwing Micah Parsons and playing with his money, if you're sitting here and screwing with CeeDee Lamb and his money, and if you're sitting here screwing with Dak Prescott's money, and you wait till the last minute, and you, they know we got to get this thing done. That's why they get screwed on these contracts. Every single one of them, they get screwed on. And if I have been screwed with, if I have been belittled and told I don't, you don't need me, why would I want to give you a, a, a break? Why would I want to say, let me make a team-friendly deal for you? Let me make it easier for you. Because the money that's saved it hasn't been going back into trying to help to fix me and the team to win. And I, I, I hate to say this, but it's almost like they really just don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to negotiate. That's why they don't make deals in free agency. You, you can see this with Amari Cooper. I don't care how much you didn't like him. You gave him away for a fifth round pick. A fifth round. You gave up a fourth round for a guy that everybody else is offering six or later. You don't know how to negotiate. You just don't. And you make the players, by sitting here and making them, whether they eat at the team's cafeteria or not, charging them for lunch. Charging them for meals at the cafeteria. Monthly deduction. And this goes to, yeah, we want you to be a team, a team guy. And Jerry Jones is counting how many towels you're using. So... People, Cowboy fans, are all on board of it's just Dak Prescott. That Dak Prescott is the problem. That he's a choker. He stinks. We need to get rid of that guy. I pointed out yesterday something that's interesting. In the 29 years, 29 years that we have had since the last Super Bowl, the Dallas Cowboys have had Two seasons of 13 wins and four seasons of 12 wins. Of those 12 plus seasons, the six of them, three of them have been the last three years in a row. Only two of those seasons, only two of those weren't led by Dak Prescott. Now, you can say what you want about Dak, and maybe he's not Pat Mahomes and can't elevate it, but you're asking Dak Prescott to elevate the Cowboys beyond what the Dallas Cowboys have been able to do with anybody else. And you can't honestly look as the Cowboys make these terrible decisions on contracts and players to keep and so on and bad trades. Remember, these are the same people that gave up two number ones for Joey Galloway, gave up a first and a second for Roy Williams. You can't put all this and say, 
it's the quarterback without looking at the front office. Jerry Jones and the culture. This is RG3, who understands something about bad culture. Um, putting it in perspective. Like the highest salary cap hit that any player had last year was like $36 million. Dax is 59 for next season. So they. Oh, mind you, one other thing here. As we go through and we talk about Dax being 59, Pat Mahomes is 57, mind you. Deshaun Watson is 62. And last I checked, nobody's done anything about either of those two contracts, and nobody else is talking about those. Obviously, have to get something done. Where does that stand? Yeah, it's not only that. 2025, if he were to walk away, he'd have like 30 plus million in dead salary cap money. So this could honestly be a blank check situation in some regards. But they've talked a little bit, cursory talks to the NFL Combine, but I'm told that negotiations have not really intensified yet. That's not a concern. They got months to shake this out. The Cowboys are projecting that they're leaving all options open, including him playing his final year of his deal. I would be very surprised if they don't work something out. Well, it would, it would, it would be so prohibitive from a cap standpoint to allow him to play it out without them making any adjustments no. to it one way or the other. And so, RG3, I really liked the response you had to me when I asked you this morning. Well, you know, we had the thing with um, Micah Parsons' brother. We had the thing with C.D. Lamb's mother. You're a quarterback. You've lived this experience of having to be the leader and all that sort of thing. What impact does that have on, on everything? What, what was your answer, RG3? Yeah, Grinny, my answer was if you pay a quarterback $60 million a year, he's willing to deal with anybody's mother or brother or any <laughs> other family member. So I don't think Dak's really worried about that. He knows that as the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys that the scrutiny comes with it. I think Dak has proven that he can be the quarterback for the Cowboys to go win a Super Bowl. I think he played at an MVP level the majority of the year last year. Mm -hmm. So Dak Prescott isn't necessarily the issue. The issue is Jerry Jones and the culture that he has created there for the Dallas Cowboys. Huh. If you really think about this, that star on the helmet has become more notorious for getting guys into big broadcast positions Post playing career mm -hmm. than it has to for them to win a Super Bowl on the field on the field in the Damn. last 25, RG. 30 years. So for me, with Jerry Jones, he has to first admit that there is a problem and that that culture that's been created is that the fact that the Dallas Cowboys have been killing the ratings. I mean, we talk about them on TV. You got people making fun of them on TV. And it just skyrockets. People love to watch. But I think the Dallas Cowboys have become the anti Floyd Mayweather. Right. People watched Floyd Mayweather as a boxer because they wanted to see him lose. But Floyd never lost. And the Cowboys simply never win. Mm. They go Ooh. into hibernation when it's time to be able to win when it matters in January, let alone get into February. They got to figure out a way to allow a coach to come in there. I know Mike McCarthy is going to be the coach this year. But I think a coach that can challenge Jerry Jones and make him uncomfortable is the only way that the Cowboys are going to get over that hump. Right now, they're too cuddly like teddy bears, especially when it comes to the line of scrimmage. That's, that's really mm. interesting thoughts Damn. all the way around. Harry, what do you think of the whole thing? Well, to piggyback off what RG3 just said, one of the greatest quotes um, that I got from my receiver coach, Sean Jefferson, when I was in Tennessee, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Comfortability drives complacency, and that's what we see from mm -hmm. the Dallas Cowboys and their organization. And for Jerry Jones, uh, he has to be better, right, as an owner, also as a GM, uh, also not wanting to be in the light when it comes to everything with this organization, with this team. Now, does he have every right to? Yes, he does, because he's the owner. But that doesn't mean it's right for the football team and them moving forward. And then when it comes to time, big time games and big time moments, the star players got a ball, like like star players. That's Dak that Prescott, go. that's Michael Parsons, that's everyone else amongst that roster. I think that's one of the things that's been hindering this football team from getting to an NFC Championship game. And if we're talking about when the last time they've been to one, it was January of 19. 1996, y'all. The, the, we had the Olympics in Atlanta that summer, so I was a kid. We literally <laughs> what, what had the Olympics. Harry, where were in, you? In, in Atlanta January that of 1996. Where was Harry Douglas? <sighs> Man, Harry was a hoop star, baby. I was Euro stepping, doing my little thing, gritty behind the back, shooting the trifecta. I was giving people hell on the hoop court. 
Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Uh, and and so then just as a final quick thought from you, uh, Fowler. Um, the, 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 the real issues they have also are they, they're going to try and get deals done with some of their other stars. Yeah. We're into that part of the year now. Should we be expecting that? Should we be expecting Micah Parsons to get the contract, C.D. Land, all these contracts we've been talking about? Should we be expecting that? Yeah, Dallas is going to spend a fortune. They've already pretty much committed to that. C.D. Lamb, I do expect to get done. Micah Parsons, he's got two years left on his contract with the fifth-year option. That could take a little longer. Uh, should we be expecting them to be in the market for someone like Saquon Barkley? Ooh, I think they're looking at running back. I don't know about that price point, 10 to $12 million, if it's going to take that. They're going to look into their options, though. They're looking for an explosive running back, for sure. I just don't know. I don't think they're going to spend that price point. All right. Mm. There you have it. That's my take on it. I could be completely wrong. It could be that, you know, Jerry Jones has gone to the players and say, wink, wink, you know, we're just stirring this shit up. We're going to get these deals done and everything else. Um, but it's about the brand and making sure we have as much waves as possible. So we'll see where it all goes. Like I said, it is disheartening if you are a Cowboys fan, knowing that legal tampering starts a week from Monday. And as of yet, we're not even under the cap. We haven't made a move yet. Other than, of course, securing that Trey Lance will be on the roster this year. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. Peace.